there on this wonderful Sunday after Friday the 13th. Welcome to the Gisela Di Carlo Show. As always, it's one o'clock. It must be Gisela, my life, my will. Our producer, Amnon. Hello. Is in the background. Hello, Amnon. Nice to be here again for Sunday. It's a rainy Sunday here in Pennsylvania. I hope wherever you are, you have gorgeous sunshine. We do. Um, you do. Yeah, we're going to have weather in the 30s tonight. I mean, I don't know what's up with the weather. What's up with everything? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I have a nice show prepared for you. Nonetheless, I have a little bit of beauty in this, you know, something that you might want to know. A little bit of politics, you know. Everybody who has been watching the show regularly knows I always mix a little bit of that in. I have strong views on that. Uh, and I do feel that information is what uh, keeps us out of trouble. If you know what you're up against, then it can keep you out of trouble. And the second and the third one, I know many people are waiting for that, is what to do if your dog or cat misbehaves or is aggressive. So let's get right into it. What's new in the beauty industry? Well, one product that has been making the headlines for quite some time now is argon oil. And you all know argon oil is uh, selling for mucho dollars. I mean, really lots of money. Um, up to a couple hundred dollars for a very small little bottle, um, depending on where you buy it. Now, what is argon oil? Uh, many of you know, but those of you who don't, let me explain. Argon oil is from the argon tree in Morocco. And... Um, there are small little nuts, little tiny nuts like this, that grow on trees. And to harvest that, they send goats up the trees onto these branches. The goats eat these little nuts because they are very, very hard. And then they either regurgitate them or poop them out. Once they have done that, people go in and take these nuts out because now they have been softened enough to process. I know it sounds gross. And when I first heard it, I said, even though I'm an animal lover, I don't know if I would do that, right? you know, put my hands there through uh, goat poop. But, you know, I've had goats. And actually, it's really not as bad as you think. However, uh, the process is so tedious that it takes about 40 hours for one liter of argon oil. Now, that makes the argon oil very precious, right? And I do agree that it does, and you know, just alone the labor of the labor intensity of to produce this oil. But let's examine really what argon oil does. Argon oil has been used for centuries by Arabs for their hair. They put it into the hair, and it makes the hair beautifully lustrous, luxuriously smooth and glistening, especially men. Um, it also, they had been putting in a, a certain um, fragrance into that. And when I was a young girl, um, I, you know, once in a while I would I would be mixing in with uh, some uh, people from the Middle East, and there would be young men there that would have this young, this argan oil in their hair with this fragrance. I found 
the fragrance was repulsive, even though it was a perfumey smell, but it was repulsive. I find now they're still often putting that fragrance into the oil. So therefore, I would never use argan oil. Um, I don't even use it in my cosmetic preparations because I find that often a uh, first pressed olive oil does exactly the same. So here's the thing. Argan oil is used for uh, different um, different applications. One is if you ingest it, it um, works against obesity. It uh, works against heart disease. It protects against insulin resistance. But all of that... The same thing olive oil does. The same thing if you use olive oil for your face to smooth lines and wrinkles, it does the same thing as argan oil for a fraction of the price. So if you uh, do not really want to use it in, in, a, in a hair preparation or really as, a, as the neat oil, now, most of the argan oil, because it is so precious, is cut. Is cut with almond oil, sometimes coconut oil, and in some cases, I suspect, with western oil because it was really rather sticky and um, is very thin in application. Because argan oil really can be very uh, thick like olive oil, okay? So... Be careful if you want to use it for health pro uh, properties. Use olive oil instead. Works the same way. The taste is a little bit like peanut oil. However, not really like peanut oil. Not as pleasant. I find olive oil much more pleasant uh, if I wanted to dip some bread in it or to cook with it or whatever, but it's way too precious to, to um, cook with. So you wouldn't use it for cooking. You would use it neat whenever you can. And like I said, uh, if you buy a small bottle, maybe a two uh, ounce bottle, uh, be prepared to pay a minimum of $150 for it. Anything less than that is cut and is not pure argan oil. You have to look on the label of what it's cut with, okay? So that is one, one thing that I found. It, it, it's really making the round uh, online and also in TV advertisement. One other thing is with TV advertisements right now, it was beauty products. Is there's one doctor? I don't want to mention his name, and I don't want to say his his product, but you'll recognize it when you see it. Oh, I'll give you a free bottle, and many of them do online too. You'll get a free bottle. Just pay shipping and handling. Be wary, very, 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 because. Once you sign up for that and you pay your shipping and handling, which could be ten, fifteen dollars, um, you also give them all the information. And if you don't read the very fine print there, you sign up for auto ship. That means every month you will get this product for about a hundred dollars or hundred and twenty dollars in the mail and you have to pay for it because you have to give them your credit card to pay for the for the um, shipping and handling I find it misleading if the if there should be government intervention which I do not believe we should have government intervention on everything but on this case I really do think that some of these business practices should definitely be stopped or revised that means in bold letters it should say by accepting this bottle by doing this bottle you are signing up for auto ship they do have 
it there. But it's so small and so hidden was in the text that most people overlook it. So be afraid, look at it, research it and see if that if it really is that you get a sample bottle. If you, for instance, uh, buy a, a, a product from me, my secret, you can buy a sample bottle. There's no authorship. There's no nothing. You buy a sample bottle for $10 or $15, uh, which is enough for a couple of weeks uh, for you to sample the product and you have it done with. Then you have the choice to either purchase it or not, uh, purchase more or not. And I really find that that is the best uh, way. I really resent the fact that people... Uh, sort of like it's a little bit like sand in the eye, right? It's not really totally kosher. Um, also, look at the ingredients of these um, of these products. Many of these ingredients are really very inexpensive and simple ingredients. Whenever you see xanthan gum in there, xanthan gum starts with a Z with an X really, yeah, Xantan. That is what makes wrinkles and lines go away instantly for an hour or two. Then they are back. Because what it does is it tightens the skin for just a few hours. Also, it can cause severe irritations. So be careful of Xantan gum in your beauty products, okay? Any, anybody who has any questions, as always, please do use your um, chat button or Amnon, please tell them of where they can call in. 919-518-9773 or Computers 2K Voice using Skype. Absolutely. Please do ask me questions about it. I will give you absolutely the right scoop. Uh, and you will you will be more prepared uh, to purchase. I'm not saying don't purchase online. I purchase online too. But be wary. Buyer beware, as always. Um, coming to our poli politics portion today, I have a little bit, as always, I have a little bit of a beef. Um, you know, um, I don't know how many of you are aware of the Civil Rights Act SB 1012. Do, do you guys know what that is? That is the act that allows um, gays and lesbians uh, to not be discriminated against. Uh, some of you may recall uh, a few months ago, I think it was last year, that this civil clerk refused to marry or give a marriage license to this gay couple. Um, I am not against gay. I am not gay. I have really no opinion about it, to tell you the truth. I find everybody should be happy after their own fashion. I'm a true girl of the 60s. I believe we all have a right to live as we wish. I believe if you want to get married to a man or a woman, you have the perfect right to do that. I don't think that we should have to have a, a government um, law for it. But unfortunately, uh, in America, many people uh, abuse this right of civil liberty. Now, coming to the Civil Act of SB 1012, that one goes a little farther yet. Here we are, we put, are putting into law that, and let me read of what it says, the actual law says. Uh, the Title II of the Civil Rights Act of 19, 
64, the federal law which prohibits discrimination by private businesses, which are places of public accommodations only prevents businesses from refusing services based on race, color, religion, or national origin. Now, that has always been. Now they included the gay, the gay um, and LBJ community. Uh, federal law does not prevent businesses from refusing services to customers based on sexual orientation. That was the law. Now, this new law says that you cannot do that anymore. Now, not all states have adopted this. Some states have adopted it in New York and California. It is against the law. And um, in many other states, it's sort of against the law. Uh, we have now this new SB uh, 1012 uh, has, or 62 rather, has um, broadened this. And there we come to a florist who has been doing business with uh, a customer for about 10 years who has been a very good customer and uh, he asked to send a fl floral arrangements to a gay wedding and she, re she refused that. She said, my religious beliefs do not allow me to do that. She is now faced with a $2,000 fine. On top of it, she may lose her business. Uh, she, it's all kinds of stuff is pouring down on her. Now, here's my question. Regardless of how we feel about it, regardless if you're for it, if you're against it, it doesn't matter. Here is what I'm asking. Where are, where are the rights for that woman? She doesn't have any. She does not have the right to say no. Please let me know your viewpoints on that. I would be very curious to know what you think about that. Because I really do find that our individual rights are being trampled on here. And, you know, I thought that was really very, very, when I heard the news about that, uh, the first thing when I asked my husband, I said, hey, listen, what do you think about that? And he said, well, the next time we are invited by a gay couple, which we often are, uh, and we say no, we might be, get sued because we didn't go because they were gay. Well, maybe that's a little excessive, but um, I really do think that um, we are getting a little bit more into the ridiculous with all of that. And even my dog seems to feel that way. No, no, no. We're, you can't be in the show right now. Um, so please let me know. I would love to know of what your viewpoints are on that. Uh, because I really think um, if we start to uh, adopt, I, I mean, you know, the government has done a lot of good things. Uh, just think about uh, what they did with the blacks, that they put the um, laws into place, that there was no back of the bus policy and so on. I really do feel, find all of that correct. But we do have to be very careful of how and when we when we uh, put these laws into order because we don't want to trample on the rights of everybody else too. Because you and I have a right to say no. You and I have have a right to uh, have also a preference, not just not just people of a certain sexual uh, orientation or 
you know, I mean, uh, it, you you can't you can't refuse to a national origin. Yes, but you know, I mean, you in reality you should be able to. Now, will that be? Is that stretching a little bit? Are we are we asking too much of our our people to make these uh, distinctions? Let me know of what you feel like uh, and what your viewpoints are on that. Do we have any questions, Amnon? No. Um, nobody. Nobody. Everybody is sort of stunned, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, either that or they don't want to talk about it. I mean, everybody should have rights, in my opinion. Um, yeah. But uh, you're talking about individual rights. They're, they're individual rights, and they are individual rights. Um, yeah. The Both sides. It's. I, I wish we could um, develop and adopt a live and let live. Just, yes. You know, I mean, yes. look, look what's happening in North Carolina now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With That's that exactly HB two, I mean, it is, it is, the North Carolinians are suffering because of it now because Most of definitely. the yeah. Feds are going to withhold money and uh, business yeah. is not coming in here and all that. It's been yeah. going on for years and years and years. Why suddenly yeah. make a big deal about I mean, it? Absolutely. We've had gays and lesbians living in this country yeah. for ever since. Right. Right? Right. They've always gone to the bathrooms. They've really not had any problems. Why are we making such an issue right. of all of that? Having legend, I think it's all sand in our eyes, to tell you the truth, because not to see what's really happening. That's just my opinion. Yeah. You know? Because I really, I, I really think the world has gone insane about all of this. No, nah, the know? rest of the, the rest of the world is fine with all this. Oh, well, of course. It's of course. only here. It's only here. Yeah, I mean, in Europe, you don't have. They would laugh themselves sick if they had a discussion yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. You know, and it, I mean, there are plenty of gays and lesbians in Europe. You know, they don't have any problems of uh, peeing in the wrong bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now, of yeah, course, I, you can go you can go to some countries in the Middle East, and if you're gay, you're going to get stoned and killed. Yeah, but, uh, but that's their problem. We should we should not be we we don't make world policy. We make right. American policy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean. You're absolutely right. If you're right, you're right. Let's go to the next subject that is maybe not quite as controversial. And please, people, audience, come out of your comatose state of uh, this onslaught of uh, all of this. I want to talk about aggressive pets. Um, pets that are aggressive is often, you know what, guys? The largest population in uh, animal shelters is from pets that the owners can't get along with. They showed some kind of aggressive behavior, and now they end up in the shelter. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that is really, really bad. Now, if any of you have a pet that is aggressive, and you know what? It's cats and dogs. It's not just dogs. But cats, it's a little bit less because a cat, um, I mean, I had a, I had a cat once that every time I walked by, he would take a swipe at me. Yeah. And finally, I said, this is ridiculous. Can't deal with this anymore. You know, because I had a pair of nice pants on or something. Claw got hooked in it. Had a snag in it. Besides, you know, you don't want to have a cat that takes a swipe at you. 
So what I did is I started to um, look at the cat's behavior towards everything else. And I noticed that the cat was also super hungry all the time. Super hungry. I mean, he the cat couldn't wait to get fed. Uh, usually cats, they come around and they schmooze you to get fed. But this cat was almost aggressive there too. Um, it was so impatient. It was so, you know, the cat was out of balance. So what I did is I started to put rescue remedy first into his food. And rescue remedy is a buff flower remedy, which I swear by. I swear by rescue remedy because it does so many things. Um, but it didn't solve the entire problem. Uh, the next one that I, I uh, did was um, I used uh, holly. Holly is used to make the animal a little more compassionate, a little more willing to share, a little more willing to, to uh, be congenial, if you want to take it that way. And it really is used for animals that are jealous of other animals or of a new baby, angry, growling, hissing, barking, snapping, unprovoked attacks, that kind of thing, like this cat did. And you know what? Within two months, I had a different cat. The cat was not, I put every day, I put two drops into his wet food. I couldn't put it into the water. Uh, if it's the only animal, put it just into the water, two drops. <clears throat> and it will give you a different animal. Uh, let me explain a little bit of how Bach flower remedies are made. Uh, Bach flower remedies are made from predominantly flower and shrubs and trees, plant material. And they are made of 80% vegetable glycerin and 20% water. And those are the inactive ingredients. And then a homeopathic remedy, mother tincture, is made from the buff flower remedy, and that is added to the inactive ingredients. So when you put two drops of remedy into the water or into the food of the animal, the animal gets the right amount. But it takes a little, it usually takes a little while before remedies start to, uh, you know, be really that they do what uh, they're supposed to be doing. Um, many, many dogs are very authoritative over their, over their owner. One of the reasons for that is if it's, it doesn't matter the size of the dog, by the way, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a small dog or a large dog. I found that some dogs show more aggressive behavior than other dogs. Like, for instance, um, a small chihuahua. They can be quite aggressive. And even though I go into the home of people to treat an animal, I often have to deal with one of those little rug rats, I call them, you know, they... They come, yep, 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 and they try to bite you in the ankle or try to bite you somewhere that they can reach. Um, they, they are really a nuisance, and the dog should not be allowed to do that. One of the, any, any size dog, even the small one, right? One of the reasons for that is many of the owners of these small dogs baby their dogs too much. They give this dog all the authority. 
all the authority. If the dog growls at them because they want to try to take a bone away from them, well, when they're small, they laugh. Uh, you know, when they're baby dogs, they laugh. And, oh, how cute. And when they're bigger and they're trying to do it, they just, oh, no, okay, it's his bone. They just give up the authority. And that is not a good thing. That can be a dangerous thing for the animal and for you. Dogs that sleep in the bed are not a necessarily a bad thing, but when they sleep right up here and right on top of your chest, they assert their dominance over you. Do not let them do that, cat or dog. First of all, it's not healthy for you. It's bad for you. Bad for the dog, bad for you, because you don't sleep well that way. If a dog or a cat sleeps in the bed, it sleeps on the foot of the bed, or maybe on the side, do not ever let them plant themselves right on your chest or right on top here. And I can tell you from experience, just recently, my little Charlie, as you have seen him, my little puppy young, can get pretty dominant. He is, he can get pretty jealous and dominant because he's always been my favorite. I've given up some authority for him, even though I know what's right. We all make the mistake. We all do. I was sleeping one night. He was, he somehow got to the top of the bed on the pillow. My other dog was sleeping on the side and he needed to, they often need to get out at night um, because I don't know. I just started that. And so we all go. Uh, I go to the bathroom, they go to the bathroom, then we all go back to bed, you know. But he needed to get up, and he came up here. Charlie sensed it, and all of a sudden, I had right up here, I had this dog fight. Okay? Not a good idea, because Charlie thought, my mommy, my pillow, mine. And that was not that was not a good scene at all. I immediately corrected that. I took him by the graph, threw him off the bed, and we went, all went out. We did our business, came back, and he was ordered to the foot of the bed right then and there, and that's where he is now. When he's sleeping, that's where. He's not allowed up here. So that is one one mistake that a lot of people make. The other mistake is for for large animal, larger like a, like many dogs are very protective. There are a few uh, breeds that have it bred into them. One is a German Shepherd. The other one is a Border Collie, very very protective and very smart. A Rhodesian Ridgeback. My son has two Rhodesian Ridgebacks. Super intelligent, beautiful, beautiful animals. But as he said too, if you do not have the authoritative upper hand with these dogs all the time, not just once in a while, not just when it's convenient to you or when you feel like it, but all the time. You are the leader. They look to you for the leader. If you are not the leader, they will take over, and most of the time mayhem will result. So always be the leader. If you have made the mistakes and you have given up authority, here's how you can remedy it. You can remedy it with a Bach flower remedy. That is, if you go to mylife-mywill.org, you can download the Bach flower remedy. I'm going to upload it this afternoon. 
and you can see what uh, what remedy to use um, that you want to want to um, for what uh, mental or problem problem that you might have. Bachflower remedies are usually for for um, mental problems more so than for an actual illness or an actual uh, disease. So uh, one one of the remedies uh, is um, the authoritative dominant, even over their own uh, their own owners, is vine. Vine, V-I-N-E, vine, um, allows an uh, animal to uh, determine not to be do domineering. And vine really does help. Chamomile also helps quite a bit for the animal to understand that you do not want to punish it. So if you have an aggressive dog that growls every time your husband comes near you, because it's the dog is male, your husband is male, he does not want any other male near you, and you have not established that you are in charge, then you need to give that animal vine. I also would give that animal um, Cena or, or chamomile. Chamomile really does calm down an animal quite considerable. Uh, I have a horse that you couldn't touch the feet. You couldn't touch the feet. Now, the fairy has to come and, and uh, trim the hooves. Uh, I mean, every time that fairy would come, uh, we both would take our life in our hand. Finally, uh, I started giving her every day, chamomile and Zena, Z-I-N-A. And you know what? She is now to the point of where she trusts and says, okay, nobody is going to cut my feet off. Apparently, she had been abused before. I didn't raise her, so she had been abused before. So you want to... You want to um, give these remedies uh, to help your pet. But these remedies alone will not do it. You have to, you have to be the authoritative. Now, let me tell you, even if you do this fake, you know, fake it until you make it kind of thing with your animal, you, you know, your dog, when he was small, he was cute and nice and he got babied and all of a sudden he turns into this monster because he's now 50 pounds. You have given up authority and you have started to show that you have fright. And if you do not really take some remedy yourself and say, okay, I am not afraid of you. Even if you take, have an enforcer, I always, like for instance, if I go to a home where I know there is a dog that is aggressive, I take an enforcer with me. I have a small horse whip. I don't use it, but it's an enforcer for me, for me, not for the dog, for me. I have this enforcer in my hand and I know I have the strength. I know it. And so I walk in, and I have this in my hand, and I walk towards, slowly towards the animal with a straight back and with the intention of taking my terror. You are not going to allow, stop me from entering the house because I have the intention, I have the authority. And that is something that you have to practice. But let me assure you, once you know how to do that, you will succeed and you will not have to take your uh, pet to uh, the shelter because you can't govern your pet. Um, 
one of the one of the uh, remedies that you can take to have more uh, self confidence is large. L A R C H. Large. Large is for self esteem, for confidence and determination. You are in charge. Large. Do we have any questions, Amnon? Nope. No. No. Oh, my goodness. So are you saying that somebody that has low self-esteem, if they just take it, they're going to get? Yes, they will get more confident. Yes. Really? Interesting. Yes. Yeah, they will get more confident. And I have used the buff flower remedies on my dogs. My dogs are all, all three as yappers, as you have heard. And they they love to yap, you know, at any little thing. And what I have done is I have given them um, impatience. Impatience, they become more patient they become a little bit more relaxed. They are not, they don't think any, everything will invade the house, so they have to protect everything. Um, works great for, for, for dogs that are constantly yapping, you know, or <laughs> um, that are constantly want to go, uh, you know. There's also one that is, for an overwhelmed sense of responsibility. Those, that is re really for, for those dogs that have the responsibility of, I, am, I have to protect my owner. I have, to, I have to be up there, and I anybody and anything that comes to the door, I have to eat up. Well, for them, Gentian really works <laughs> miraculously. You put that, it takes sometimes a month or two for it to really, but even after you've given any of the buff flower remedies just once, you will see a small result. And the longer you give it, the more result you see. It really works. Buff flower remedies for animals are made for each other. Mm -hmm. They really are the best. Okay. And nobody and nobody can argue that it's all psychosomatic. That that it's you just believe no. that it is, so it makes you do it because no, no. the animals no don't question. know it. No, and you know what? You will see the result. Uh, like I said, I mean, I have treated. I have when I was in California just now. My son, they have a cat that um, was very attached to its owner. The owner died, and they um, inherited the cat. Well, the cat is really a little messed up. It's still grieving. It's still wanting to. He got a dose of Ignatia, and just after about an hour of the Ignatia, you could see on his demeanor that he felt better. You know, he walked a little better. He was more curious. He was not quite so, so, you know, like Blah. bunched up and tied up. He was more relaxed. And from what I heard now is he's eating better and he is... He is just not quite as depressed. So I told them to keep uh, doing the Ignatia, that it would help them um, to righten this cat. Yeah. So it's really, Ignatia is for grief, you know. Many animals uh, go through that too, that they grieve for either their owner or another animal that has left the pack. I mean, they have, they have uh, just like us, senses, and they bond uh, with, uh, you know, their, their pack animals, which includes humans and other animals. And once that part of that goes, uh, it's just like us. We grieve and we, we you know, grief is grief, hate, 
Yeah, grief, hate, and love, I think, are the most changing emotions that we can have. They change a person. They change a person, an animal, uh, any living thing to, you know, to into something else that they were not before. Love, of course, you know, into, into a loving, loving and nice. But love also can backfire, you know. Love, then you have jealousy. Love, you also have possessiveness. So we'll talk about all of that at another show because this show has ended and I love doing it. I really do hope to hear from you. Uh, all, if you have not, if you have not been able to um, tune in, tune in next Sunday, tell your friends, Tell them this is a show that they can learn something or just have some fun. Amnon, it was a pleasure. No, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. And I will see you all next Sunday. Bye for now. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Omnon Nissan, My Life, My Will with Gisela DiCarlo, The Tanya Love Show, Help Then with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Triangle Be Well with Howard Jacobson, Lunch and Learn with Rabbi Yisrael Cutler, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, Parent Dome with Ryan Miller, Current Affairs with Amnon Nissan. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section on nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.